U.S. Air Force plane approaches Stanleyville on a mission of mercy. Aboard are the vanguard of more than 500 Belgian paratroopers who quickly secure the airport before pushing on to the city to rescue white hostages held by Congolese rebels. As native government forces approached the city, the rebels had threatened to slaughter all the whites they held. It was then that the U.S., Britain, and Belgium mounted this joint effort to free them. It is now early morning as the tough combat troopers prepare to move into the city. The streets of Stanleyville are quiet, but it is the ominous quiet that is an epilogue to terror. The approaching paratroopers heard shots, found 29 people dead, among them Dr. Paul Carlson and another American, Phyllis Rhine. The opportune arrival of the Belgians prevented further slaughter by the Congo rebels. They had gathered 250 whites outside the Victoria Hotel and were about to begin a wholesale massacre. With the city secured, U.S. Air Force planes begin the evacuation of loyal natives and more than 1,700 whites from 17 nations. Among them are 55 Americans. Three others died, two were shot, one hacked to death with knives. They have been released from terror, but not from the shock and disbelief of their ordeal. Most had never expected to leave Stanleyville alive. But the next stop is Leopoldville, where they will rest before being returned to their homeland. Once the humanitarian mission was completed, the paratroopers were withdrawn. They had done their work well, but the tragedy will long echo in the names of Dr. Carlson and Miss Ryan, who became martyrs in their efforts to bring education and enlightenment to untutored Congolese. Thus, another bloody chapter is written in the brief history of an independent Congo. For five years, the African nation has been torn by internal strife. Has tomorrow's lesson been learned from today's horror? The answer is hidden in the Congo's clouded future.